Based on the memoir of the same name, the film Just Mercy is a legal drama that tells the true story of wrongly accused Walter McMillan, played by Jamie Foxx, as he attempts to appeal his murder conviction with the help of young defense attorney Brian Stevenson, played by Michael B. Jordan. It's a common story of racism and inequity played out in the U.S. criminal justice system set in rural Alabama. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and this is Leaving the Theater. So we are not leaving the theater. We are already at the theater because we're about to see a different movie. But uh, I recorded this review before and because uh, the levels weren't set correctly, I was not able to use the sound. But luckily, the guest that I saw that movie with, I'm seeing the same movie, a different movie with him tonight. So reveal yourself, guest. Hey, guys. Michael Jefferson, a.k.a. Mass Potential. How's it going? All right. It's your boy, Big Ronald. And... uh, this is our thoughts on Just Mercy. So, uh, let me give you that better notebook. Yeah, I, it's already in the car. All right, so, uh, Just Mercy, uh, directed by, uh, all right, directed by Destin Daniel Cretton. Screenplay, screenplay by Dustin Daniel Credden and Andrew Lanham, uh, based on the book Just Mercy, a story of justice and redemption by Brian Stevenson, starring Michael Bay Jordan, Jamie Foxx, Rob Morgan, Tim Blake Nelson, Rafe Spall, Bree Larson, and O'Shea Jackson Jr., a.k.a. Ice Cube Jr. Yeah, Ice Cube's son. That's right. <laughs> I like how you call him Michael Bay Jr. <laughs> yeah, I heard it one time, and I've like never it's, been able to hear fitting. it again. It's oh, fitting. this wind is not a game. It's fitting. This wind is not a game. This wind is not a game. Okay. Oh, man. It's all wind. It's all wind in the microphone. See that? Where can we stand? I guess we got to go back inside. Let's just go back inside. Okay. Okay. So, uh, basically, uh, what our thoughts were initially. It's too windy out here. We can stand in there. Can we even get in there? I think it's just a a stairway down. Oh, true. Let's do that. Unless it creates a wind tunnel by us standing in there. Uh, That's possible. You know, physics being. Will we get this review done? Oh, yeah, we can just stand right here. All right, it's going to be a little echoey. Uh, so if it, the wind dies down, we'll step back outside. Okay, okay so anyway, um, what we thought about this movie, well, what I thought about this movie was that it was heavy-handed. Yes. Uh, it was extremely heavy-handed. They went, uh, they went to great lengths to show how racist Alabama was. And for a brief plot term, which I said at the top of the episode, it's... Uh, the story of Walter McMillan, I believe his name was, and how he is wrongly accused of murder and then placed on death row, subsequently convicted and placed on death row. The lawyer, Brian Stevenson, who wrote the book that this movie is based on, played by Michael B. Jordan, is trying to uh, win his case to get him out. Walter McMillan is played by Jamie Foxx. So we're already rooted in racism because yeah. they're in Alabama. Right, right. It's almost like uh, because we're in Al- like Alabama is how you know it's a racist, right? They just, hey, it's Alabama, it's racist. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that 100%, but I think we all are on that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong. I don't want to, I don't want to like, disrespect so, anybody from Alabama. Right? But, it's true. And, and, and I think they go a very far, they do a, a great length of saying, like, hey, yo, this is Alabama, this is racist. They got them using the N-word with the hard R just occasionally. Yeah. They got the deep music going. Yeah. They got the long looks coming from the white folks, that yeah. type of thing. Everybody's staring, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have all these things that, that, that are, like, supposed to be indicated that this place is racist, but it's done in such a way that, of course, you're going to feel emotionally manipulated yeah. into thinking, it's like, relentless. Wow, yeah. yeah, it's relentless. It's not just a, like, hey, just, hey, it's racist, like, set up the racism, and then just remind you periodically. It's almost consistent. Like, in every scene, something terribly racist just happens for, for almost... For no reason. Well, for a reason, but like overkill. Like we get it. We you said it with Alabama. We're there. We're and, there. And Why? and and that's the thing. <laughs> I believe the reason is the reason for me is not necessarily to add any richness or depth to the story. Right. But more to 
set the mood for what's to take place later in the movie. Exactly. So that the triumphant moment is more triumphant. But that's not, it wasn't necessary. No, it absolutely <laughs> wasn't. Because we already get, by, by the nature of the crime itself and by the nature of how everything went down, we already get how horrible it is. Now, I will say, if this is on par with the book, if they're doing the same thing that is done in the book and they're just representing that on screen, which I highly doubt, um, I haven't read the book, but I would read the book to find out then that makes more sense. If they're translating that to screen, then it makes more sense. But if you're just trying to make a good dramatic movie, and it came out during Oscar season, it didn't, and, and uh, we know the nominations now was not nominated for anything, I don't believe. Wow. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, I, I think it was, I, it seems like the perfect thing. That, it seems like it was made for the Oscars. Like, yeah. like it, it might have been, might as well have been written, directed by a guy named Oscar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was 100% an Oscar bait movie. And based on what I know of the nominees, there's no reason why this movie could not have been included. Uh, so that, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not well versed enough to know, but I am surprised to hear that it's not a, on, a, on a, one list. Yeah. Right. It's not in one category. Right. So. With all of that being said, uh, and I, I, I liked the movie, and me and Michael Jefferson talk about this, we both liked the movie. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it just, the, the heavy handedness of it all, and there's several scenarios in which the heavy handedness almost shines through. Uh, Can the, we talk about the dog? Oh my the God, dog. yes. At <laughs> one point, there's a courtroom scene. There's a courtroom scene, and people are walking into the courtroom, and they, and I know that dogs can be racist, I understand, and but not racist in the way that humans are, but just, you know, uh, led to believe that darker people are, right, right, are right. enemies. But that being said, there's a uh, there's a moment where people are walking into the uh, the smoke into the uh, into the uh, Cor- no yeah, the, the courthouse court room, but they're going through the metal detector. Yes, there it is. And uh, <laughs> the woman walks in. It's a montage, and as one of the women walks in, the dog barks. And I turned to look at Michael Jefferson. And I was like, Come on, man. even the dog. Like, <laughs> like yo, even like we get it, man. It's yeah. Alabama. It's and this and this is in like the like the final act, right? Like we're like we're at the end. You guys, we get it. Yeah, and I we think that's it. what got me. If this had happened earlier in the movie, I would have been like, okay, you guys are setting, yeah, setting the, the tone. Right, right, but, right. but you guys are talking about, like, in the third act of the movie, like, you guys are still doing these little things. I'm like, we yeah. get it, man. It's, we know it's racist. So We get it. So there was a point in the movie where where Ron kept getting, Ronald kept getting upset <laughs> because of how heavy-handed it was. And every time they introduced some new, like, racist act or racist, you know, um, dialogue, Ronald just throws his hands up, right? Ronald just throws his hands up. And, but the whole time, I'm getting upset at the characters. Like, forget, like, I'm the guy who gets into the movie. So I'm upset at the characters. Like, the characters, like, this is real. Like, the characters wrote the dialogue. And Ron, Ronald had to remind me, like, no, no, no. You're upset with the writers. You're upset with the, the directors and make, creating these scenes, right? And, yeah, and that's the thing. I think uh, you, you make a bring, bring good point because I was angry in the first half of the movie. I was angry. But towards, as it tipped over and the instances of racism just became like, all right, come on, guys. Like, yeah, yeah. get to the meat of the story. Yeah. Tipped over is a good word. It's almost like you had racism in a jar and eventually it just kind of fell off the table and scattered everywhere. Yeah. Like, it was almost like, you had, like <laughs> they were almost like cartoonish at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, when we get to that point, I just, I don't, I don't necessarily think, it was just hard for me to sit there and watch and be like, all right, come on, guys. We get it. They're racist. We know. You could, you could, you could tell it either wasn't written or wasn't directed by a person who had experienced actual racism but their idea of what, what a person who experienced racism would go through. Yes, uh, agreed. <laughs> there, was now, no subtle, there, was, there was a lot less subtlety to it, which is real racism, which is, oh, I guess back then it was probably a lot more overt, but you would think there'd be a better mix, and, and it was just 100% overt. Yeah, and I, and I okay, so D- uh, Dustin, let's see, his name was again, oh my God, all my stuff just fell out. Oh, Lord, I need all of that, Michael. Ugh. Uh, my, I'm using my notebook and all of my oh. cards fell out of my, oh no, do I need those? I don't, they're already gone. Ugh. This is a terrible, terrible scenario. I'll, I'll just, okay, yeah, just, just hold it with that, take that one too. Yeah, okay. So the director, Destin Daniel Cretton, I believe he's of Asian descent. Um, I, I did not look this up, so I'm, I'm sure he has experienced some sort of racism fair, in his life, some sort enough. of bigotry. But that being said, uh, experiencing the white-black racism is it's just a, it's an animal of its own. And it's really hard to, uh, to me, it's like, I'm sure that apartheid and racism are comparative, but I don't live in South Africa, so I imagine that it's different over there, even though you're used to the idea of white people uh, being disparaging towards black people, but it's like, yeah. it's a different animal. Yeah. And you can tell that this guy didn't necessarily, I don't think he necessarily had grasp of that animal for this movie. Yeah. Uh, and we could be talking completely wrong. We could, they could have it been could like, be the book. This, yeah. this could be, you know, word for word what the book was, but it just seems like 
that wouldn't be a good book if that was the case, right? Yeah, yeah, and I agree. But the book is based on a true story. So, I mean, the book is a true story. So, it's, it's, it was tough in those, in those regards. With all of that being said, uh, we both thought the movie was good. I get, I think it was, I think it should be an, an, on any other day in which this movie has more nuance, has more structure. This could be a four, four and a half star movie. But as it is, I gave it three and a half stars. I think that's uh, fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. Which puts it right in the middle, middle of me liking it and loving it. Uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. But it just, there were some drawbacks. Yeah, it could have, yeah. It, there's some fixes, right? It could have, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And they weren't, and it wasn't quite there. So uh, with all that being said, we're about to go in and see another movie, which you guys will hear from us very soon. But you guys know what that means in the meantime. So, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Round Studios, theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. You can get updates about this show and other Oh, It's Big Round Studio shows by following me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Round. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this podcast, check out our sister podcast, Time Well Spent. I want to thank my guests so much for <laughs> Why are you giving me that look. No, no, I forgot. I right, hear the music. That's why. Okay. As soon as you start doing that, <laughs> I want to thank my guest, Michael Jefferson, for being here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. This is always fun. And uh, leaving the theater, we'll be back very, very soon. I'll see you at the movies. <laughs> <laughs>